We welcome everyone to episode 115 of One Hour, One Decision, 1H1B. I am Chris. And I am Tom. And we take 60 minutes and play a random game on Xbox Game Pass and decide, well, Tom, is it worth your time? Is is soul collecting worth my time? I, I don't know. Well, we're about to find out. And in this episode, we're going to be talking about Unsold by what I think is Megusta game. Megusta of many games. <laughs> yes, this might be one of them. But this game came out back in April of 2022. And I played this on the PC. It was a meager 1.27 gigabytes. Tom, what about you? Curious, curious, curious. How on the Xbox One is it 1.8 gigabytes? Where? What are those for? It's another no half gusta. a gig. <laughs> no me gusta on that one. Does it make any sense? That is, I don't know. I don't know. That is weird. Um, I'm not sure what was happening there, but we'll have to. We'll have to ask the developer. Yeah. But we could also ask the developer what kind of game it is. I think the developer would tell you it is a 2D action RPG. Yeah. Well, see, I don't know about the RPG thing. I, I think the developer would call it that. What would you call it? <laughs> I called it a 2D soul style adventure game. Hmm. Is that not an action RPG? I mean, yeah, but you're not creating a character here. So is, every... is, that, is that the line for you? I don't I think know. So. Every most RPGs that I play, you, you play as established characters. Not necessarily. Uh, every JRPG. JRPG. Then you should put JRPG. Yeah. I've, action it's not, JRPG. It's, a, it's not, exactly, but then it's not a JRPG either because it's like I don't know. It's, okay. Okay. I, 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 I see what muddy. you're saying. It gets muddy. Even though I will say the Soul Style thing is also kind of iffy too, but. So weird. Uh, but what's that game loop? Okay, so chain together attacks to defeat undead enemies and level up your character to advance the plot. Nice. nice. I just put progress the story while beating your way through levels. Yes. We said the same thing. We just said it different ways. Differently. Just different. Same, but similar. Similar, yet different. I don't know. But let's get into those likes, Tom. Yes. Let's find out which of these things we agree on that we liked. <laughs> yes. Uh, Good. So I noticed right from the jump that easy, like easy mode has an appealing name and yeah. appears to be the default selection. So normally, you know, you're kind of shamed for playing it mm -hmm. on easy. The game says this is normal. And if you want to play on easy, you got to you know ta tab to the the wrong way uh, mm. and select the, the the game version for babies, and they and they call it easy. So you're like kind of shamed into it. But here, if I would say that the uh, not only is it the default selection, the easy, but it's not called easy. It's what is it called? I don't know. I it don't recall. Very, it was like Prince of yes. the Way or something like that. Yes. Something, I was like, it has some, okay. a, a very elaborate name. And in fact, yeah. if, if you were to pick normal, it is just normal. Yeah. So it's it's like the reverse. Yeah. I, 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 will, I, like say, I, I will say that the, the animation that happened or the, in hard mode was interesting because there was like skulls floating around and stuff like that. It's like almost warning you like, hey, this is going to be really hard. Let's not pick this right now. Yeah. And speaking of which, I do like that you can toggle between difficulties on the fly. Yeah, that's that was nice. That's nice. And, and it doesn't seem to penalize you at all for doing no. so. No. Uh, in fact, it only gives you more like I think the hard, the harder you, harder difficulty you select, the more like you're rewarded. It's like, hey, good job! You're trying something a bit more challenging. Here's some more stuff. It's positive encouragement, not making you feel like a piece of crap. Yeah, it's it's all carrot, no stick. Yeah, yeah. So good job, good job on that. 
speaking of rewards, I want to touch on that the practice area mm-hmm. gives you like the currency of the game, yeah, uh, which you can spend immediately. So I really like that. I really like this idea that you not only can you like, kind of like go to this practice area largely when you want to, mm-hmm. but that spending time kind of teaching yourself the combos and do, doing those uh, little side missions there, uh, you you take that reward with you. Yeah. That's, that's great. And, and on top of that, I like that it reminded me of the practice areas of like of fighting games. Yes. Because, because like you have, it gives you your move sets that you're, or, or like the, the buttons that you're pressing. And, and also, you know, let's do, like you said, you, you practice the combos and it gives you uh, feedback on if you're hitting those combos correctly or not, which is nice. It's a nice thing. To, and, um, you know, a, a good way for you to get good. You know, these souls like games should implement something like this. That would be nice. Yeah. I would think. I, I think any game that is sufficiently challenging and has a sufficient learning curve, you know, like fighting games, yeah. uh, would definitely benefit from something like this. You don't yeah. need to you don't need to make the rewards extravagant. It wasn't like at any point I felt like I broke the game by going right. and doing these things, but yeah. it maybe gives me the extra couple of points I needed to unlock another skill that I was just on the verge of getting or something like that. Yeah. And that, that just makes my gameplay experience better. So yeah. well done. And speaking, speaking of which I thought this game's combat system was incredibly deep. Yeah. For what it was, I was really surprised. Like there's, there's a, there's a rhythm, there's a flow to it. And and you need to like you know, there's there's a there's a parry system. There's different types of parries that you can do. It was I was I was honestly surprised how deep this the system went. Uh, I agree 100 percent. And with a system, you know, a game that has a system like this, it, it shouldn't surprise anyone that when you get it, it feels real good. Mm-hmm. You know, when you when you land the timing. And, and you you kick some serious butt, and you yeah. you 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 master a finisher, or if it's Mortal Kombat and you do a fatality, you feel you feel like king of the world. Like absolutely, you, it's it's a great feeling. So that yeah, was that was well implemented. And I will say also, this game had really good load times. So when you died, you were you were brought right back up, which is nice. And the music when it was there was pretty good, almost like um. Oh man! <laughs> some points, some points, the music sounded like a a Skrillex was doing the soundtrack or something like that. <laughs> but uh, but it, it was it was good for what it was. Oh. I don't know what you thought about the music. But. I uh, I I didn't notice it mm-hmm. like good, bad, or indifferent. It didn't really register for me. Um, what did register though, or I, at least I should say, I was surprised by was certain times where the the art really mm-hmm. shone and it yeah generally you know and we'll get into this a little bit later but pixel art me and me maybe don't get along so well but there were moments in this game like when it reveals the waterfall or right. when the the game will do this really cool thing where it'll like zoom out to kind of sh- give you like a, a better lay of the land or to, to yep. show you something in the distance and I was just very impressed, and I thought this game did uh, a lot with a little. Mm-hmm. Like, did you get to the boss fight? By the way, yes. Okay, I thought that the implementation of like what you're talking about was really well done there, and there was even like some I don't know 3D almost parallax yeah. stuff that was happening too. If you get thrown into the the building, yeah, I was like, what the heck is going on? Like I was like, it was it was trippy. Like I thought, was this is this game actually in 3D or they just doing some sort of trickery with the pixel art, which was very cool, very cool stuff. Um, anything else you wanted to bring up? Uh, I thought it was neat. Little little attention to detail here. Like there's a sequence where I cut down some trees, uh, like I chopped them down, and then the trees fell on me and I took damage. And I was oh, like, wow. I was like. That's cool. Like, like, 
I did like, you know, like a, almost like a link style, like spinning slash the, the trees come down, but I was like in the way and, and I took damage from it. And I was like, wow. I was like, good attention to detail guys. You know? Yeah. Uh, one other thing I do want to bring up the, the, the leveling uh, system. I played this on normal and I thought it was fairly forgiving. I thought the game overall was pretty free. If it was, if it's considered almost a souls like game, I thought uh, the, the game didn't punish you as much as I thought it was going to, because like, think about like, I've, I, I died several times in this game, but I didn't lose the souls that I collected. Mm -hmm. And, and there was a, a a decent amount of save spots in the game. So I didn't feel like I had to traverse too far to get back to where I had to get to. And when usually when you play a Souls game, you get to those checkpoints and you rest there and, and you know, do whatever you have to do. Like in Wolong, all the enemies are reset. Right. This, that wasn't the case, at least in my, to my knowledge. I don't know if you saw anything different, but. Uh, I did not, but I want to point out that I didn't feel like I was backtracking at all while I was yeah. playing this game. It always felt yeah. like I had forward momentum and I was going somewhere and getting somewhere. I didn't right. spend really any time running running around in circles, mm-hmm. um, which can happen in a in a soul style game, right? Or any Absolutely. really like open world style game. Yeah, it, it it seemed like it was open world, but it was just enough to just yes. But it, it gave you a path to get to, yeah, which was nice. So that was cool. All right, are we are we ready to talk about some dislikes here, Tom? Yes, I am ready. Uh, Okay, so it's an action game and there's no jump button. Now, <laughs> it it may not matter, right? Like maybe there's no point at which jump would have been relevant. Mm-hmm. But I notice when there's no jump button. Like I I want to be able to jump even if it's just for my own nothingness, you know? I don't know. Feels weird. Feels weird to play an action game and not be able to jump. Okay. But uh, yeah, I I don't I don't disagree with you, but I didn't see there being a particular area that you necessarily needed it. But, you know, that's neither here nor there. I do feel like there was there were certain areas or certain um, places in the in the world. Like, for example, there were some buildings that you could walk into, but then there was like nothing there. So I was like, so what was the point of that? Just to just be there. And it made no sense to me. Like they could have just made it a flat space like you know like it was a broken ruined thing and not let me go in there like i don't i don't really care i don't need that kind of uh uh, to to impede my impede my gameplay really so um and the one thing as much as the combat system is deep i felt like it was probably a bit too deep yeah there seems to be a lot of stuff that you can do but there's there was a lot of tutorials and a yeah. lot. Uh, the tutorials were very, very uh, wordy. They, there was yeah. just a lot for you to try to take in. And it was, but I, I granted, I, I'm sure this is why they had that um, that training area right. Right. is for you to continue to get better at it. But I was like, I think by the end of my playthrough, I was just mashing buttons. I was like, whatever, just like, just like I would in a fighting game. I'm I'm not remembering maybe most of the combos. I'm just trying to do as much damage as I can with the buttons that I know. So. Right. No, I agree 100%. I, I wrote right here, bombarded with tool tips while I'm playing. Yeah. And in parentheses, this isn't fun. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. pacing matters, guys. Like, mm-hmm. you can have all of these buttons. I shouldn't learn them all in the first hour. Right. <laughs> It's kind right. of what it is, right? It's like you can have an incredibly deep combat system, but don't try to f- jam it down my throat in the first, you know, 20 minutes. Like it's too much information for the player because I'm all, they, I'm trying to figure out your world, I'm trying to figure out your characters, I'm trying to figure out your controls. Like right. you need to spread this out in a way that feels natural and, and that I don't notice that you're doing it. I thought they did a good job in the first, I'd say, 15 minutes, like when you were still in the prison area. Yeah, that's or, true. They did a pretty good job of of showing you how to do like the basic 
yeah. uh, commands. But then it was like, as soon as you get out of there, there was just like, oh, you can grab and, and take the souls and do these other combos. And you're like, well, wait, I, I know I got stuck in the tutorial section for a good chunk of my hour. Because I was like, oh, I'll just keep trying to learn all these things. And I probably didn't progress as far as I would want wanted to in the game. Right. So, but it was, again, it was a good tutorial system, but, or, or like a practice area, but it was, it was a lot. It was a lot for what it was. Yeah. And um, as much as, I, I think you, you, you wanted to talk about this, the pixel art, while there are some very really imp impressive moments with the kind of art that they did. Yeah. I thought overall, like even the character designs were just kind uh -huh. of meh. Yeah, I I don't like these like the pixel art character thing. Mm. I, I don't know. I don't I don't know what it is. It just bugs me. Yeah. Um, I think the level designs and stuff were really cool and looked really yeah. good, but the characters bugged me. And it and it gave me that same sense that we had experienced before with the previous game, where like the cover art is misleading versus right. what you're actually playing. Yeah, um, absolutely. And, and, and then on top of that, because there's there was kind of like uh, cut scenes as well yeah. throughout the game where they uh, had some decent looking art assets there. And it's like they couldn't have just converted some of that to the to the game yeah. like that would have been nice, you know. Um, and I thought the story, I, I don't know what was going on with the story. I was a little confused about that. Because there seemed to, it seemed like the tone was a bit disjointed. It might be just the particular character, but everyone seemed pretty serious. And then you meet this girl that was just like kind of like literally her, her every every word her, every sentence started with he he. Yes, and I was like uh, yeah, I can't. I don't know what to do with this person. It's annoying. So perhaps by design. Perhaps by design. You're right, but. Yeah. Doesn't um, make her any less annoying though. No. No, not at all. But I yeah, that's again, we're just in the first hour, but it was uh it was very odd odd to kind of get that kind of tone from from the game. Yeah. Like the swings in tone, I guess right. is what I'm trying to say. So Anything else you want to talk about? Dislikes, or should we move on to? Uh, just really quickly, two little fast points. One, like when you're naming your character, you can only mm. pick lowercase letter letters. That bothers me so much. But <laughs> yes. If I'm going to be Tom, it's going to be with the capital T. Thank you very right. much. Uh, right. But that's not an option here. Um, and I also, the controls to me, and it, I was having a hard time putting my finger on exactly what it was, but mm -hmm. they aren't intuitive in some way i think it's just i my fingers want to press different buttons than what you, they've selected as the layout okay. now to the game's credit all the controls can be adjusted to your preferences as a player in the settings option so yeah. that that's a purely me thing so if i wanted to switch which was attack and which was guard i could have done that i try okay. to generally speaking play the way that the designer sets it up because i want sure. to do it the way that they've set it set it up um but i was i was struggling with some of it because of that Fair. it wasn't it wasn't what did wasn't intuitive to me okay. oh well okay but that's uh i mean i i've got nothing else for dislikes but i um i will say though that how long to beat this is odd this is really odd tom okay this game can be completed in two hours. What? Supposedly. The the range is crazy. It goes from two to 18 hours. This game can be completed. Maybe it's like Mario Brothers style. Maybe there's some way that you can secret your way to the final boss from the beginning very, or something. Very possible. I'm not sure, but that's what it says. That's what How Long to Beat says. I, I'm not going to deny what they say at this point. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I guess what, I wonder what the average is. It's probably somewhere in the middle. Yeah, probably somewhere in the middle. And this game is Xbox available on Xbox Cloud, uh, but you do need a controller to play it on Xbox Cloud. And it is uh, cross save, and it's not it's not play anywhere, but it is cross save compatible. So you can pick up your game if you left played it on your PC back in your Xbox and vice versa, which is nice. 
you know, always a nice thing. Um, anything else you want to bring up though, Tom? It seems like you have something here. Uh, yes, I do have two little points. One, uh, I want to note that this is the debut title of Megusta Games. So it is mm-hmm. the first and only game uh, by Megusta Games. And Megusta Games is just one person. So the oh. design, programming, art, and sound all done by one person. Uh, I hope I don't say this too wrong. Uh, Jin Sub Jung. Uh, oh. So I thought that, that was pretty impressive. I was, I was really impressed cool. when I yeah. looked into it and I was like, wow, all of this? One person? Like, that's, you, that's usually really cool. you, you're like, okay, like the mechanics are designed over here and the artist does it over here. No, no, it's right. one person. Hey. Well done, then. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to say his name because I'm again, I probably butcher it as well. <laughs> but well done, sir. Um, that's that's awesome. And but Tom, we have to find out though, is this mm. a game that is going to be worth our time past this hour or not? Well, but before we get to that, we wanted to let you know about a spectacular sponsor, Winner Winner. Winner Winner is a live arcade claw machine game available on Android and iOS, and it's 100% skill-based. Trust me, if you see me play my games, you know I'm not that great, and I still have won games on my first try. There's hundreds of prizes, even featuring gaming merch from Nintendo. Pick your prize from choices in your particular game, or bank your earnings with tickets to redeem any other prize you want from their wide selection. And for all you lovely people listening or watching our show, you can get bonus tokens on your first app token purchase. Download and create your account, then use the link in the episode's description to enter promo code What It Do after you sign in. Check it out. It's Clawsome. I mentioned earlier that I enjoyed getting things down, right? Mm-hmm. Succeeding in this game feels really good, but I spent most of my time failing, and that's mm. not fun. Not, <laughs> I mean, I don't know how the rest of you people out there live your lives, but I like to succeed in the things that I do. I don't really like sure. to fail, uh, sure. and certainly not over and over and over again. Um, so as a consequence, I don't think I'm going to be motivated to return to this game. Uh, but because it is such a small game, I did leave it installed, uh, and I'll see. Maybe, maybe something will draw me back. Maybe, well, what are you going to do, Chris? Well, honestly, I was very surprised by this game. I I didn't really I didn't really think I was going to enjoy this at all to be to be honest. And you know, the the deep combat mechanics and the fact that I I I felt like I was getting encouraged to continue with this game because even the boss battle, like I thought that I was going to be a challenge. It was a challenge, don't get me wrong, but it was like I felt like I was just just there at the yeah. end of the at the end of my uh playthrough I, I mean i thought i think i fight i think i fought him like three times and i got i got pretty close uh, there was literally one where he i had him with like a sliver of health left and he knocked me out and i was like ah it's frustrating but um i did continue and played the game after the hour huh? and beat him good so, job chris thank you Thank you. So that was that was kind of cool to do that. And again, look, I mean, if this game can actually be beaten in two hours, that means another playthrough like this and I can be beat it. I'm I'm down with that. I'm going to sign me up. I, I will try to beat this game. Then. OK, why not? I'm, I'm listen, if you beat it in two hours, I'll 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 try to beat it, too. Yeah. I don't think you're going to beat it in two hours. <laughs> I think I think something's up there. But yeah, you let me know. Oh, you think you, you think the developer just snuck that in there into how long to beat. Just be like, man, let's just see what happens. He's like, I could beat it in two hours. <laughs> yeah. I wonder why. Anyway, those are our thoughts. Let us know what you think of this game. Follow us and say hello on Twitter at TC1H1D or shoot us an email at TC1H1D at Outlook.com. Check out our next streams on Twitch at twitch.tv slash 1H1D. And if you're watching this on YouTube, yeah, try to send us a comment down below. We'll try to respond, you know. And of course, 1H1D is part of that QTV network. So check out all the real cool content that QTV has, not just games. They talk about some other cool stuff there. And if you want, check it out at quitthebuild.com slash network. 
Yeah, done. What's well, up? there there is a network of games available for playing on Xbox Game Pass, and uh, I need to know what the next one we're going to be playing is. You got you got yourself a good point there, Tom. We do need to find out. And surprise the button's going to tell us. So here we go. Okay. Are you surprised? Been, I am, because I've been wanting to try this game out. Lost in Random. Well, how fitting. How fitting, because <laughs> we, we picked a random game and it's we're getting random game. in the title. Yeah, random in the title. So... Lost in Random is going to be the next game that we're going to be playing. And that is it for this episode, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in. And we can catch you on the next one. Thanks, everybody. 